I'm learning history in Cleveland, Tennessee. Oh, Coe Society, Five Points Museum. Telling a story of our history. Coming together as community. Welcome to the Curious Curators Podcast with your hosts, Hope Vollum, Lindsay Shirky, and Elijah Hammonds. Today we're going to talk about communism, socialism, and fascism. This ought to be interesting. Hey guys, welcome back to The Curious Curator. I'm Hope. I'm Elijah. And I'm Lindsay. And today we're going to talk about some core political concepts, kind of in the context of how they've been in the past, um, their origins and ideologies, communism, socialism, and fascism, um, also with the context of what we know best, which is capitalism, because we live in a capitalist society. Um, This kind of came about because we were having a conversation with someone and they believed that the Nazis were communist, uh, which is absolutely categorically untrue. Hitler's biggest rallying cry really was against communists. If you read Mein Kampf, that's really what he's against. He did conflate Jews with communists. He would call them the Bolshevik Jews. Um, but people people tend to think that Jewish people were the ones who were subject to most of his ire, but it really started with the communists. Hmm. And he kind of ended up conflating the two as well. Um, so, of course, they were the biggest enemy of the Nazis. Um, so the Nazis were definitely not communists, nor were they socialists, which is another misconception that comes up because they were the National Socialist Party, Mm -hmm. which is what Nazi is short for. Um, So this is something that we kind of wanted to touch on just in a way to kind of clarify what these ideologies are, talk about some misconceptions and kind of put them in a historical context for you so that you can be better informed about the politics of today as well. And this has been quite the learning experience for at least two thirds of us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, most of this was new information to me, so it's been good. I mean, it was kind helpful. Crazy. I, I feel like I learned a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, it's great when we learn as well as you guys will learn, so exactly. it's a process that we go through together. Still learning. Yeah. Um, so what we're first going to start out with is uh, socialism, and Elijah did a lot of the research on this. The whole point of socialism was the idea versus bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, and Marx claimed that um, socialism would be that stepping stone, the thing that would lead to ultimately the ideal of a communist state, um, which Lindsay will talk about later. Um, And the proletariat means the working class and bourgeoisie is kind of the, it's the class that owns the means of production and owns the labor. It's, It's basically the aristocratic class, yeah, essentially. The class, if you will. Yes. And so sort of the the idea was that um, the working class would eventually own the, me- the means of production instead of, like you were saying, the aristocracy owning that means of production and sort of ruling over the workers. Um, so these people are working for these larger companies, and instead of that, now they are, it's sort of being flipped on its head to the point where they actually have control over their work. And um, the best sort of working definition that I was finding was that um, the democratic state is going to be owning the means of production rather than the private sector. So the workers produce and contribute as much as they can to the greater good and then equally share in that good. Um, And there's tons of different variations of this today that I found over eight examples of different socialist um, ideas that have been tried to be implemented in different places all over the world, some that are actually being done right now in different countries throughout the world. Um, But there's different examples of this. But that is sort of the, the main point is that you are switching the means of production so that the power is actually in the hands of working class citizens. Yeah, so kind of moving on to communism, and like Elijah said, just to reiterate, socialism, uh, according to Karl Marx, was going to be the stepping stone to communism. Um, Communism actually was an idea that's been around for a long time, but didn't necessarily have that term. Uh, That term started coming about during the French Revolution, and Mm -hmm. there were a lot of that, there was a lot of that ideology during um, also the English Civil War. Uh, The Roundheads, which were the... um, the opposite to the monarchy, uh, had allies who had basically an idea of redistribution of the wealth equally, Mm -hmm. which is a core communist concept. Um, 
Radical French thinkers also saw property as theft, which is another kind of rallying cry um, amongst uh, communists. Um, in 1847, the Communist League tasked some of the founding members, Friedrich Engels and Karl Marx, with creating a manifesto. Mm -hmm. And they developed modern communist ideology based on dialectical materialism. And dialectical materialism posits that all matter comes into being as a result of conflict. And Marx and Engels argued that this was class conflict, that mm -hmm. society is itself class conflict with that proletariat and the bourgeoisie against each other. Um, the two of them developed Marxist communism, which is a very philosophical communism. It contends that all history is class struggle, and class struggle is unavoidable. Uh, eventually, the proletariat will overthrow the bourgeoisie and create a classless society. And they were certain of the eventual fall of capitalism and the inevitability of a global revolt. Uh, not necessarily a violent revolt. Mm -hmm. uh, that was not what they advocated for. But this was called seizing the means of production. So the peasantry... Um, the, the peasantry, and this is me getting into a Maoist idea, the working class um, was the revolting party um, against the bourgeoisie uh, to seize these means of production. And, and one thing, yeah. just to sort of, so that we're clear on what means of production or factors of production are, in, in my research I have found that the things that they classified under that were labor, capital goods, natural resources, and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. But for you, what would you say that would be? Would you say that's a, a fair definition of the means of production, or would you label it as something different? I would say that's a, a fair label, but today as well, um, something that we need to keep in mind is that uh, labor is very widely defined. Uh, mm -hmm. It's defined differently than it was back then. Back yeah. then, you're thinking about people working in factories, factories. or mines mm -hmm. or um, any of that, but really... Anything that you produce yourselves is a type of labor. Um, mm -hmm. So you can you can produce uh, podcasts. This podcast, yeah. and that's that's a type of labor that is something that you've produced yourself. Um, and and basically in in communism that they believe that you should own the profits of your own labor. Mm -hmm. um, it goes, and that's that's a socialist idea as well. But where communism kind of absconds from socialism is that they believe that there's an absence of class, there's an absence of money, and there's mm -hmm. an absence of the state. Um, so socialism has this idea that the state should be the one that um, redistributes the wealth, whereas in communism, it's the workers who own that wealth. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially, it wouldn't be wealth in the sense of money, it would be wealth in the sense of resources and the products of their labor. Um, and something interesting that I found out was that the state, um, as defined by Merriam-Webster, is a polity with a monopoly on violence. Oh, yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. Oof. <laughs> I feel yeah. that. No, and it's, it's, it's basically saying that um, the state is what can enact lawful violence. Um, as opposed to the unlawful violence of serial killers. Right. Um, so I thought that was... Uh, Clearly, we have a great time reading each other definitions in our office. Yes, so. we absolutely do. <laughs> um, but socialism is basically everybody gets that equal share of profit and property and wealth mm -hmm. is redistributed. Um, and everyone works to the best of their ability and receive based on their need rather than mm -hmm. their contribution as it is in capitalism. And um, communism takes all of that one step further. And there, there are a lot of other concepts. Um, you have Maoism. Um, you have Leninism. Um, you know, and Leninism was a little bit more believing in the state that you needed a higher echelon of working class people to control the rest of the working class and to um, work for them rather than the entire working class. But then you have concepts like anarcho-communism, which believes in a stateless society, essentially, and that mm. we should govern ourselves. But there's there's a lot to unpack there about different types of uh, communism. But basically, this came about... Um, in the late 1800s, gained popularity during the Russian, the Industrial Revolution, and especially during the Russian Revolution in the early 1900s. And I think that kind of brings us up to fascism and the the backlash against communism. Oh, fascism! Okay. <laughs> so I was like, I'll do fascism. It's no problem. Spoiler alert. <laughs> 
Spoiler alert, problems. it's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> I had problems. All right, so I think fascism, as Lindsay has said, can basically be called a counter solution to both communism and capitalism. Mm -hmm. Fascism is a beast of a different kind, and it's really difficult to define. Because there's really no definition of fascism. <laughs> but there are some like kind of thought processes that make up the whole fascist ideology. Um, we're going to start with extreme nationalism. Very extreme nationalism that also leads to xenophobia, like a fear of foreigners. Hmm. So there's also a central power. And that central power is usually like a dictator. Or something of, and maybe they don't call themselves that, but that's kind of, I think, from the outside looking in, that's what it would be. And you need, like, so much, like, just devotion to this person. It's absolute loyalty. That's going to be demanded. And that's at the expense of your own individual rights. So you're kind of giving up your individual rights in order to, like, follow this one person or entity. And... I also came across a lot that said, like, social Darwinism sort of came into play, meaning that, like, individuals and groups of people are kind of subject to the same laws of natural selection that, like, plants and animals are. So you could, like, you know, if you can't contribute or you can't keep up, you're not really necessary and you need to go. Nice. And, yeah, I, it's, I mean, this is, like, this is pretty harsh, which I think if we think about... Um, some of the societies, like, that we've seen as fascists, like, yeah, they were harsh. They were harsh. Um, and I'm just sitting here like, wow, this was – I was reading this, and I was, like, telling Elijah all day, like, this is rough. This is really rough. Um, but basically, you're not questioning the central power. Like, the decisions that they make are always right. They're the ones that are saying, this is what we're going to do, and you're just like, cool, let's do it. Um, and it kind of evolves out of a group, like, fear of another group. So um, the communists, the Jews, um, capitalists, really anything, like they just want this power for themselves. And the people have to submit to the will of the nation. Hmm. Um, and this is kind of the guise of this is like national self-sufficiency, national security. That's what this is all about. Like, And the state is kind of like owning everything or the state is being supported by everything it's all about the power of the state hmm. and in some like cases like foreign trade is banned you don't want to be dependent on anyone else your mm -hmm. personal worth is tied to the state which i guess if the state was doing really bad that would be really bad for you but and it's really really complete opposite of what communism represents because communism the idea is that you have an international revolution they don't want borders they don't want countries it's like yeah. the anti-nationalism yeah. as well as also you receive according to your needs so somebody who is um quote unquote a burden on society in a fascist society would be receiving mm -hmm. uh yeah in, in in the philosophy and the ideology yeah. of communism i'm not sure. saying the reality and i think that in like some of this like, you can kind of see why fascism isn't, like, a widespread thing that just, like, happens everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. We don't – we clearly don't have, like, a bunch of countries, like, living as fascists today. Not, like, fully. <laughs> um, and the <laughs> – the, you know, because, like, clearly the examples I have are going to be pretty well known. Like, we're talking, like, Hitler, we're talking Mussolini. Like, that's mm -hmm. not happening today. Like, people aren't really kicking around like that. Like, in I mean, that I know of. I could be wrong. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But that's just kind of what I'm thinking. So it's, you know, there's no... But I think fascism was difficult for me. There is no definition. There is no, like, like real way to, like see when it even started hmm. like the term comes from like fascicio literio which was literally a bundle of rods tied around an axe that the magistrate would beat people to death with cool so that kind of explains the whole thing huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know maybe it came from the jacobin movement of the 18th century maybe it came after world war one Maybe it came from, like, the end of the century, like, movement of the 1880s. Maybe it kind of came from, like, Darwin. 
We don't know. We're not it, sure. I think I think though the modern the most modern iteration of it as we know it comes from um, the response to communism with Mussolini in mm -hmm. particular spearheading the modern idea of fascism. Right. Um, he wasn't def he definitely wasn't the originator of it because he was actually working on somebody else's ideas as well. Um, but definitely, I think Mussolini kind of brought us the fascism that we all know and hate. Yes. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, um, I think that just, like, a quick side note is, like, when you think of, like, fascists, you think of, like, Hitler's, like, parades, right? Mm -hmm. You think of, like, right. the Hitler youth, like, marching and everyone is saluting. And that same thing happened with Mussolini. That's what those are actually modeled after was Mussolini and his, like, black shirt police. They wore black shirts. Right. Very creative naming process that he had there. Um, they wore black shirts <laughs> and they would, like, do the same thing. <clears throat> so, like, all of that... Like, Mussolini's really the one that, like, pulled it together and made it a show. And then Hitler took it and ran right. really far and really fast with Very it. Very far, yes. But, yeah, so if you're a little bit confused about fascism, that's that's because it's... Join the club. So are we. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's because it's kind of hard, like... But yeah. all of these are really difficult concepts. Yeah. They're, they're deep political concepts that have a lot of origins and have been um, kind of... <sighs> they've de they've b developed over time and changed yeah. and morphed into different things. This podcast is a production of the Alderman Group and the Museum Center at Five Points. Be sure to check out all our upcoming events on our website at museumcenter.org. That's museumcenter.org. Let's continue with the show. And um, with each sort of political context that they've been used, it's sort yeah. of developed and sort of translated into, okay, that was bad. Well, <laughs> and the well, other fascism's an insult now. You, people yeah. just say, like, you're a fascist. You're a fascist. Mm -hmm. Like, no one says, like, my government's going to be fascist. Thank you. And the, the other issues, too, are misconceptions with these ideologies and um, also conflating certain things or especially here in the West, misunderstanding what communism is or conflating it with authoritarianism, which communism can be authoritarian, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Mm -hmm. um, fascism, though, is always authoritarian. That's kind of baked into the, the core beliefs of fascism. That's true. Explain, you, the other day you explained the four quadrants. Yes, the economic political, quadrants, yeah, the, the economic. political economic quadrants. Mm -hmm. um, it's a concept that you start to see online a lot. Um, and most of the time it's made into a meme rather than its original purpose, which is um, you, have, you have left and right, which stand for left and right. Um, it, is a, it is a four quadrant um, ideology. But then at the top on the y-axis, you have authoritarian at the top and libertarian at the bottom. So if you're looking at this quadrant, for example, you would have authoritarian right. Mm -hmm. That would be fascism. You have, author um, you have libertarian right, which would be basically the libertarians. You have authoritarian uh, left, which is more like Maoism. Um, which I'll get into that in a minute because I don't think it is, but that's where a lot of people put like Maoism and Titoism and different types of communism. Mm -hmm. Then you have the libertarian left, which is more like anarcho-communism, anarchists, and that sort of thing. Um, it just has to do with political ideologies, the left being communism and the right being capitalism. Uh, speaking of capitalism, we can kind of move into understanding capitalism as well mm -hmm. um, as a context for all of these other political ideologies because that's what we live in today. Right. And we all, I think, did a little bit of research into capitalism. It's kind of hard to pin down because we live in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just everything that I read, I was like, yeah, okay, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah like, all right, cool. And, <laughs> you know, some of this was harder than I expected it to be because I was just like, yeah, okay, like, I, I get it. I, in my head, I was like, I'm going to remember all that. And then you didn't. I mean. <laughs> well, I, I think the the easiest definition that I found was the main goal of capitalism is innovation with the purpose of increasing wealth. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's usually, like, a free market and such, right? Yeah, well, free market, too, is kind of... Um, it can be a misnomer. In laissez-faire capitalism, of course, there's a big free market. But then you have, um, you have state capitalism, which is actually – so state capitalism, let's – it's a heavy topic. 
One of the big Cliff misconceptions. <laughs> yeah. One of the big misconceptions is that the Soviet Union and China were communist. They were not communist. <laughs> yeah. They were not even socialist. They called themselves socialist countries working towards communism. Mm-hmm. They were actually, according to a lot of historians and economists, they were actually state cap- forms of state capitalism. Here's the difference. State capitalism... Uh, State capitalism control acts as the government acts as a corporation. Instead of redistributing the wealth, they own the means of production. They own people's labor. Mm -hmm. So the people are still working and the government is the corporation that owns it all. Um, And this is actually seen a little bit in the U.S. with the too-big-to-fail bank issue where the government funded the banks. Or the bailouts even, right? Bailouts, yep. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Um, where the, the government, at the expense of the people, makes sure that these corporations survive. And that state capitalism is that most of the corporations are funded by the state or government funded. They're controlled by the government and the government kind of acts as a big corporation on its own. Mm -hmm. And it refunnels the labor and the production back into creating more production. And that's basically what the Soviet Union and what China achieved. Um, They were not necessarily this, this according to Lenin um, was a stepping stone to socialism was starting with state capitalism, but essentially Free market was not necessarily uh, not necessarily uh, imperative to capitalism. Um, it's a laissez-faire capitalism where it's kind of let the market decide is that right. ideology. Um, and of the political quadrants, that would be the the libertarian right mm-hmm. is let the market decide. Mm-hmm. Um, anarcho-capitalists are also in that category. And maybe we can get like a little sketch of this put up on the web- on our website. If I can find can one that's it. not a meme, yeah. <laughs> or even like you draw well, you can hand draw one if it comes to it. Um, but maybe we can yeah. get that put on on our website, like under resources for these for this podcast at least, because sometimes it's not as easy to picture it <clears throat> if you right. haven't seen it. Yeah. Or you can look up the meme on Google Images. Right. Um, That's a sell. The fun thing about capitalism, too, is that one of the big arguments is that participation in the market is human nature and the whole concept of Mm -hmm. wealth and greed is human nature was kind of – this this all started basically in England um, between the transition from 1500 to 1800. This was kind of pushed Mm -hmm. by economists um, because one of the things we talk about is that like capitalism was kind of a naturally occurring thing. And I think it was, in a way, you know, it was the it was the thing that made the most sense alongside the Industrial Revolution is to have industrial capitalism. But at the same time, that ideology was pushed. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, and that was one of when I was sort of researching in socialist um, ideas, it it was a common <laughs> misconception is that people believe that socialism and this idea of wanting to take care of the people who are sort of marginalized and not Mm -hmm. taken care of in our society is just against human nature and that we do want to just gain wealth and continue to hustle and grind and get get ours you know what i mean like that's the whole <laughs> yeah, american, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the whole american that's principle the american I mean, dream, is, isn't it? Is, is that like you work as hard as you can and you become whatever you want to be mm-hmm. and it Look Turns at YouTube, out, right? Yeah, like, YouTube. They're doing and, it. But the whole mi- the misidentification is that that is not necessarily our human nature. Is that sort of it's imprinted because of people who have interest in that and are trying to push those things Absolutely. during the Industrial Revolution and that sort of thing. Um, and this, this like, isn't a Karl Marx fan podcast. Absolutely not. What we're trying to do... The thing no, is, this is a Jason Isaacs fan podcast. Thank you. <laughs> we've been propagandized for capitalism and against communism and socialism. And that's not to say that communism and socialism don't have their issues because they definitely do. Um, the, the biggest thing here is we're trying to convey that socialism and communism might have not been what you learned growing up in the Cold War. Mm-hmm. Um, right. 
and that what we've been told is communist, like China is actually not communist. China has a stock market. Right. Socialist mm-hmm. and uh, communist countries would never have a stock market. <laughs> they have wor- They have hourly wages. That is not something that happens in socialism and right. communism. Yeah. Um, so it's basically all our lives we've been propagandized to think capitalism good, communism bad. And so we're just trying to kind of address misconceptions here both ways, which is going to, I think, rub on people the wrong way a little bit because – it goes against things that they've been taught, essentially. And, yeah. you know, it's not to say that capitalism doesn't have its, uh, you know, good benefits and good aspects. Um, innovation is definitely one of them. But that's also not to say that, you know, capitalism or communism doesn't have its flaws. I think that, like, just there's no, like, perfect system. I mean, on paper, like, every system can be perfect, right? But right. in, like, all actuality, there's no perfect system. So... I think a lot of times it's easier to just agree with the one that you know, right? So we're like, right. capitalism is great. Like, look at what happened, you know, to the USSR. But, like, that's not a real, like, mm-hmm. way to think about it. And you said that we were, like, kind of propagandized against communism and socialism. We're also propagandized against fascism, but, like, oh, absolutely. that's kind but- of, that's kind of, like, all right, I will say this is an anti-fascist <laughs> podcast. I will agree I'm with that. I'm definitely speaking out against fascism. Well, yeah, I'll agree with that. And, I mean, if you just think, like I said, I've used the, I used, you know, Italy during World War II and um, Nazi Germany, clearly during World War II, as kind of my case studies here. And I'm not sure if anyone knows how they, like, I mean, you know how they ended up in general, but if you know what happened to that, like, one leader, like, I wouldn't want any part of that. Right, yeah. Because, I mean... Mussolini and Hitler did not meet great ends. Yeah, they, um, it was kind of, you know, rough on both of them. Mussolini and his mistress, like, kind of tried to take off. They got captured. They were executed by firing squad and then hung upside down outside of a service station in Milan um, to prove that they were dead. And then, you know... And to quote Eddie Izzard, Hitler ended up in a ditch covered in petrol on, on fire. fire. <laughs> yeah, after like after a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I definitely think that this could, you know, that propaganda might be correct <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. would be correct, I would say. But I think the others definitely have, you know, high points and low points, just like capitalism has high points and low points. Yeah, and I just – I kind of want to – start finishing up this episode of the podcast by addressing a few misconceptions yeah, about communism. Definitely. One of the misconceptions is that there have been communist states, which is not true. That's a Western idea. Mm-hmm. Um, in the West, um, we call them communist states, such as like Vietnam, Cuba, Laos, etc. Mm-hmm. But such as China and the Soviet Union being probably forms of state capitalism, according to some economists and some historians, those places call themselves working towards a social state a socialist state with the goal of eventual communism. They don't actually call themselves communist yeah. states. Well, I think that the communist states, I'm using air quotes at this point, comes from like the Red Scare. Like, you know, yeah. we're anti-communist, we're blacklisting everybody. Yeah. Like, was that McCarthy? McCarthy like, is We're panicking, yeah. okay? Like, and I think that's why a lot of people think that some, so many of those places were actually communist because, right. I mean, that was their goal. That's what the FBI said. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, and, an, and another big misconception, um, people get scared of the abolishing of private property in communism. Um, they think that means that all their stuff is owned by the state. There's a difference between private property and personal property. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the abolishment of, like, privately owned businesses and things like that. Everything would be owned by the state. But you still get to own your own toothbrush. Yeah. Like, there's like, personal property is not private property. No one's going to come to your house and be like, that's the state's toothbrush. Yeah, out of exactly. <laughs> you can't have another one, you girl. Can't brush Sorry, your teeth bye. for the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah, so that's another big misconception that I run into a lot, uh, ran into a lot when I was researching communism, is that people seem to think personal and private property are the same, and they're not. Um, mm, definitely not. I think that ultimately people today sort of confuse all three concepts and will sometimes group them together into a (laughs) put-down, which is just kind of, I mean, it's just uninformed. Um, And so I I had no idea that there were so many differences between all three. Obviously, fascism is awful, and this is an (laughs) anti-fascist podcast. However, communism and socialism are very different in 
what they actually advocate for. So well, and there are so many different branches within within each. Yeah. So like keep I was, in mind when people yeah. just call other people communists and the like. That's that's not. It's not true. They're wrong. So <laughs> like chances are they're very wrong. So maybe just kind of keep that in mind because I think a lot of these names get thrown out as insults so often. And you know what? Insults are always like that, though. Like, they're well, usually, uh, like, uninformed. Exactly. A huge mm-hmm. misunderstanding and uninformed. And, and the whole purpose of this podcast was just to kind of talk about the historical context and where these ideologies came from and what they actually are. Yeah. Um, not necessarily to advocate for any one of them, but to say, hey, this is actually what this is and these are actually the goals and kind of spread a little bit of truth um, in conjunction with uh, addressing some misconceptions as well, just to yeah. keep everybody informed today. Um, and hopefully you take some time to research a little bit more about the past as well. Yeah. And if there's any other political movements that you're interested in and you want us to try to talk about Absolutely. for you, let us know. It doesn't even have to be three. If it's one, we could probably talk about that as well. Like, trust Yeah, we me. could have talked about fascism this entire podcast. Yeah, we have no um, qualms about talking a whole lot about one thing. So definitely <laughs> let us know. But thanks so much for listening today, guys, and we'll be back next week. Bye. Bye. Be sure to join us next time as we talk all things history and tell the story of the Ocoee region. I'm learning history in Cleveland, Tennessee. Ocoee Society, Five Points Museum. Telling the story of our history. Coming together as community I'm learning history In Cleveland, Tennessee Oh, Coe Society Five Points Museum Telling the story Of our history Coming together as community I'm learning history, Bob Pons Museum.